at the end of the bargain. It was no contract. I didn't have to pay for anything except for the hotel because I did stay there. So training with them, it was decent. I had no complaints. I enjoyed the people that I trained with. Now, um, the after you get your um, CDL and you bought with the trainer, I feel like that portion is a little short. Um, some people, you know, don't get that at all. So I guess I can't be mad. But it's 28 days with the trainer. Mine's got cut even shorter because um, it just got it got really messy with me and my training. Ooh. Now, I would say for me, I would have. It, I feel like it could have been a lot worse because I didn't get trained through the winter time. Mm-hmm. Um, and my trainer, she was a good person, but I feel like she was lacking a lot of knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I would ask, like, you know, basic questions or whatever, and she really didn't have an answer to give me. And so, to me, it kind of just showed her, like, I'm training as well, um, as far as, like, once I was over the road with her. But other than that, you know, it was, it was, it was decent enough. What was what was some of the what was some of the issues that you was having with her? Well, like just simple things. Like I asked her because you know how we have you know you have to uh, move your tandem like you know so that you're not overweight. Mm-hmm. And I asked her one time. I said, "Well, how do you know you know what direction to move it and how many to move?" And she told me, "Well, you just play around with it, you figure it out." And I'm thinking, like, even as a newbie, I'm just like. After all these years of trucking, y'all ain't figured this issue out. And so I had to learn some things on my own. Also, with her, I never actually went through any mountains. Um, mm-hmm. So I didn't learn how to use the engine brake, which is very simple. But if you've never knew it, uh, learned how to use it before, that'd be, but that, that could be dangerous, you know, out there on the road. But I thank God that I met people along the way who just, I call them my earth angels, who would just, tell me the right information at the right time because when I learned how to use the engine brake, I was talking to one of my friends on the phone and I said, you know, I never had to use Goldale Mountains when I was in training. I was like, how do you, I said, how does that work? And he explained it to me and I'm glad that he did because the next day I had to go to New Mexico mm-hmm. and I experienced my first mountain and I probably would have died <laughs> like, because I was so scared. But yeah, so it was just like little things like that because it was only 28 days because I feel like she didn't know um, some things she probably just had bad training as well and then also they were so in need of female trainers after six months you could become a trainer so if i had stayed there and i wanted to be a trainer i could have done that and it would have just been another ignorant person leading another ignorant person so i think that was kind of like the worst part about it but Mm -hmm. i ended up learning a lot more when i got my ex so three years of uh of driving so far uh, of course, are mm-hmm. you are you still with Rider Express or no? No, sir, I am not. All right, so three years. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> three years of driving uh, so far. What was the hardest part for you to become a truck driver? The hardest part, honestly, for me, I believe it was more of the mental work because when I got into trucking, like I said, I just freshly gotten a divorce. So mentally a lot of things I didn't realize that it affected me deeper than I realized. And so I was fighting off a lot of like anxiety and I'm already like an overthinker and stuff like that. And so I think like for me, initially getting my CDL, it was like pushing myself to not give up, even though at times I would feel overwhelmed. Like when I was learning, like, you know, the pre-trip and all that and just different things were happening or I'm riding around curves with the instructors. Like it just, moments of just like frustration would hit me and sometimes I'd be like I wouldn't have to do this shit if I didn't get a divorce like I don't know that thought would just come to me like I would get frustrated with my ex-husband sometimes because I'm just like I felt like this is something that we were supposed to do together Mm -hmm. and it was like now I'm out here by myself doing it and so for me it was a big mental fight a mental battle for me to push forward and to do it and not just be like okay this is too hard now after getting having my CDL, I think the hardest thing for me is like, you know, kind of the, just the, the fear of like, you know, the ice on the road, but you just learn how to navigate it, really. You just, you know, use common sense, really, honestly. All Even right. though it's scary, it's common sense. All right, all right. So that's what's up, man. At least you had the, at least you had the fortitude to, to, to keep, you know, to keep pushing, to make, uh, you know, to make it happen for you, even after your divorce. Uh, 
now after your now after your divorce and you kept on you you kept on trucking, do you guys still stay in touch with each other or 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 what? No. <laughs> I mean, I'm the type I don't keep in contact with my exes because I just don't feel like there's a purpose for it. I don't have no children, so what would I be talking to you about? I don't know. That's just how I feel. So no, we don't keep like one time. Well, when I was going to CBS school, I will say that he called me. I want to say maybe once or twice. And I kind of after that, I was like, I can't talk to you on the phone. And he thought I was just kind of rubbing in his face that I'm getting my TV. I'm like, no, because we ain't going nowhere. So it's just like I'm not even gonna. You know, I didn't want him to feel or think that maybe if we start talking again, something might happen. So I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't want something done. I'm done. All right. He's a good dude, and sometimes I do think about him, but I don't. I don't want to. You know, I don't want no blurred lines. I got you. I got you. So before you got into trucking and you got into school and everything, what did you expect to? You know, when you when you got in, you know, as a trucker, what did you expect? Like, what you expect out of? What did I expect? Yeah. Honestly, I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. I just knew it's well. Let me say this. So. Right before I got my CDL, I did this really, I did this government contract for like two months and they paid very well. The brokest person out there at this contract, the government contract that I was doing was making $8,000 a month. So they was making $2,000 a week. That's the brokest person. There were people making way more than that. And when I found out about this place, like, well, my family members, a few of them were working there and I knew they said they were making good money, but it didn't become real to me until I started making that type of money. And right towards the end of it, I said to one of the guys, I said, what am I going to do? I said, how can I go back to, I said, for one, I hated what I was doing before. I said, and how do I go back to making, like, I think I was making, like, maybe $16 an hour or something like that. And I'm like, how do I go back to that? And he said, you know, he said, when you start touching a certain amount of money, he says, you find out ways how to keep that type of money coming. Mm -hmm. And his words kind of stuck with me. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm like, I need to keep making that type of money. But at the same time, I need to at least like what I do. I hated what I was doing. And while I was going through my divorce, um, I moved to Georgia, but I had to go back and forth from Georgia to San Antonio. So I would do these drives. I would drive. And those times had become so peaceful and therapeutic for me. I was like, I need, like, I felt like I needed that. And so before I started doing the contract, the government contract, I, I thought to myself, like, I was going to, my goal was, I'm going to be like one of those, like, you know, people, like nomad people who just like drive around, you know, document their experience and all that stuff. But then reality hit me like this, like, what, how are you going to pay your bills, you know, doing that? And then so trucking was kind of like, I wanted to do van life. So trucking kind of became my van life. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, all right. So, doing doing that, you've been in it for three years now, and you went to school for it. What did you wish you would have thought? I mean, what what do you wish you would have? Wait, let me rephrase that. What do you wish <laughs> the school would have taught you that you had to learn the hard way? Um. Hmm. I think honestly <laughs> um I, I the training I wish the training would have been longer um or not even that because it still would have just been ass training but it I don't know because I learned what I needed to learn through people so God graced me right there so it's kind of hard so I can like for me I guess um if I didn't learn it from people. So, of course, how to use my engine brakes. That's a really simple lesson to learn, but it's a very important lesson to learn, as well as, you know, how to drive through, like, you know, the winter time. Now, of course, they send out videos and stuff like that, but honestly, I should have been watching those videos, but most of the time I wasn't. I wasn't thinking nothing about those videos. Um, also, of course, a lot of companies aren't going to really teach this to you, but I wish that the trainer would have at least taught me is about, like, you know, your money when it comes to like detention pay, layover pay, breakdown pay. And I asked one of the instructors, I said, well, I, I asked him about how much he felt like the new, like new drivers would make. He says, honestly, 
y'all are gonna make less money because y'all don't know about any books. Any said like the Kendrick Lamar. He said those things, but he never explained it to me. Mm-hmm. And so I've been driving for them at this point like four or five months, and I was talking to one of my friends on the phone. And I was telling them, I said, "Hey, they had me sitting for like three days straight." And he said, "Well, did you get layover pay or something like?" I think that you get layover pay. I said, "No, I gotta not get asked for that." He said, "Yeah, they supposed to pay that to you." And so I started going over my checks and start looking over like the things that my loads that I did like actually keep track of. And they end up owing me a couple hundred dollars worth of money. Now, of course, I don't expect the the company to necessarily teach me about that because I'm sure they pocket that when it's all said and done. But my trainer, I wish she would have taught me that because I had lost a lot of money. And I only end up going back a month, like asking for that money. I think it was almost like five hundred dollars that they end up owe me just in that month alone. And I'm like, I've been here for like five months. Y'all probably owe me more, but they were trying to talk that nonsense. Like usually, we don't go back that far. So I wish my trainer would have like let me in on like little secrets like that. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. Being a woman driver out here, uh, what are some of the things that? you know, that, that, uh, that, that you, that you have seen or heard or anything like that, that, you know, that bothers you as a woman driver? Um, for me, I feel like for one, I believe there's a common misconception. I don't like to uh, take away from anybody's experience, but at the same time, I do see some women, not all women, some women try to make it seem like, well, you said what I don't like. So let me answer that first. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't had a bad experience out here as a female. Now, okay, let me re- let me reverse this. It's not necessarily bad, but it is something, if I'm not careful, it can bother me. Like, I don't care about it when people say it initially, but when I'm having a hard day, the, thought, the, the words kind of cross my brain. Like, when men are like, women shouldn't be out here driving trucks. I've heard that a lot. Like, women don't need to be out here driving trucks. Need to drive into the men. I've had... One guy say to me, he's not even a driver and telling me, you know, you need to get back in the kitchen, have some babies. Mm. You don't need to be out there on that road. Mm. Like, I've heard those kind of words. Like, not someone told me that this is my thing to say to me directly. So usually I'm just like, I don't care about what you say because I'm about to get this money. Regardless, unless you're about to place this income, you really have no words for me. But when I'm having rough days, like when I'm struggling out here, like, like you know, when I'm struggling sometimes those words do come to me and it's like, maybe I don't need to be out here. And then sometimes I'm thinking to myself, like, like fear will tell me, but maybe you don't need to be out here by yourself. Maybe you need to go team with somebody and maybe you need to get back with your ass, you know, stuff like that. But other than that, as a female, I, I feel like I've had a good experience as a female. Besides those words, I feel like most of the men have been, most of the men have been respectful. Um, I've heard some people say that, oh my God, they sound thirsty, so disrespectful. That hasn't been my experience out here. So I feel like the men out here just be minding their business trying to get their money. Like, that's that's been my experience. They'll hold the door for you. You know, some are more courteous than others, but I haven't had any bad experience. So, and I really, I like to tell women that a lot because I'm like, don't be afraid. Now, of course, you got to use common sense. Like, because we are in a male-dominated industry. So use common sense when you're out here. I know sometimes you see, and this is no shade to anybody, Sometimes you will see it where, like, people, you know, uh, you might see the girls, like, we're a little bit more revealing. But I can almost guarantee that the girls who have, like, the really clothes on in those videos, they probably don't look like that half of the time. I don't know for sure, but I would like to venture to say that half the time they don't look like that. So it's just, like, when you're out here, you, you know, you get out. I feel like a lot of times you get out of life what you get out. So just use common sense. And, you know, if you give out a certain energy, sometimes you can expect a certain energy. And, of course, you got a few people that are close the line. I've had some weirdos. I've had a guy try to get in my truck before. Um, I've had a man follow me around a store. But those times are so far and few between each other, it's not enough for me to say, like, it's horrible out here. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's rewind back. Did, did somebody tried to get <laughs> into your truck? What well, happened? let me explain. So, what happened with that? <laughs> So at this time, I actually was uh, with somebody when I was out on the road. I ended up getting with somebody. He actually taught me a lot about trucking. He, he really trained me for real. And so he was in the back at that time, and I was still kind of working on my back end. And this guy saw me trying to back, so he jumped out of his truck. And he helped me maybe, like, I really didn't need his help because I told my ex, I said, stand in the, I said, can you just stand right there? I said, if you feel like you need to get out of the truck, go ahead and do that. He didn't feel the need to get out. 
he was just standing at the the like you know at the bed or whatever. So this guy helped me for less than ten seconds. He really wasn't trying to help me, but he was pretending like he was trying to help me. And he was just like, "Do this, do that." He's like, "Here, let me do it." So he comes, jumps up on my truck, and he tries to open my door. But I always keep my door locked. Mm-hmm. And he did it so fast and so confidently, it kind of threw me off for a second. I almost reached to the uh, the door latch. I'm like, no. And then I pointed to my ex, and I'm like, we good. And then my ex looked at him and said, we good. And the guy was like, oh, my bad. I didn't know you had somebody in there. I know you had somebody in there. Wow. And so when, after we backed up, and I got into the space, me and my ex got out the truck, and um we were walking and so the guy seen us walking so he starts trying to fill out my ex trying to figure out like okay are they together is he training her and then he was talking to my ex he's like oh yeah, yeah i saw my suit and then i told her i was about to get at her or whatever and i'm like well if my ex wasn't here what the heck was your plan like just to get in my truck like you're not gonna ask and so that to me like in hindsight looking over it like without my ex being there i realized that could have probably been a little bit more that could have definitely been a little bit more because I really don't know what his, I don't know what his goal was. Because, for one, you just really just shot jump in my truck. So I think that's like the worst experience that I've had out here, but I was with my ex, so it worked out. But, yeah, he just tried to fill out my ex, and then he even waited until, like, we was done showering, and he kept, like, asking him more questions, like, trying to figure out, like, were we together or what? Like, I don't know. It was just weird. It was just weird. That was a, That was one of those weird times. But like I said, common sense comes into play. Keep your door locked. Don't let nobody get in your truck. It was at nighttime. That's when you just like, nah, bro, I'm good, you know? And I probably at that time would have just not took it in the shower and took it in the morning. All right. Naya, everybody. Man, thank you for coming on uh, and chopping it up with the lockout, man. You know, okay, as I welcome. said before, the best conversation starts over here at the Lockout Man podcast show. Uh, <laughs> interesting story naya uh you know what i'm saying what are what what are your goals now i mean are you are you what what are you you're you still a company driver owner operator what's what's your uh what's what's the end goal for you in this trucking thing well yes sir i am still a company driver honestly i was scared to become an owner operator at first um just because like sometimes i let that I don't know, like, I think about the mechanical and just the, like, I know there's a lot of responsibility that comes with being an owner-operator, right. and I kind of was playing myself right there, but I finally got to the place where it's just like, I mean, come on, sis, how long are you going to keep making people rich? Like, so, um, I am a company driver. I drive uh, for um, for a company out in Chicago, so right now, what I'm doing, because I know the trucks are really high right now, is just, I'm like, okay, let me get back on this road real focus, and I'm just stacking as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, my, uh, what I want to do, like, within the next year and a half is, like, look into purchasing a truck. Um, trucking is kind of, like, a stepping stool to me, but I also love it. So, like, for me, it's, I think it's something that I'm always going to do, but I do look to build off of it. One day I want to have, honestly, I want to, I want to own a couple trucks. I kind of want to buy a truck for each one of my nieces and nephews eventually. Um, now I'm going to run it. But if they ever decide to take up without having any children, like I said, but if they ever decide that they want to take up like this side of it, I want to teach them about the business and I want them to have a truck. Like once they get a certain age, um, I want to be able to teach them like what I was never taught as far as business. And this is what I was telling one of my friends. And I was like, I just want to show like my nieces because I have six nieces and they're all gorgeous. Um, they're babies, but they're gorgeous. And I'm not just saying that because I'm an aunt. But like, I just want to show them like I was telling my friend when I was growing up, a lot of the women that i seen doing, like, well, who had money. Um, and, there's, and this is no shade to anybody at all. I respect whatever they do. But all I knew or all I seen people be successful was the dancers or the escorts or the ones who, like, was with somebody who had a lot of money. And for me, I didn't see women... I knew they were out there, but it wasn't personal to me. I never seen anybody close like being successful in business without using their body. And now, like I said, no shade to anybody, but I just want to show my nieces something different because, like I said, they're beautiful girls. And if they decide to take their route when they get older, it's not because they didn't have somebody in front of them showing them something different. Like, everybody ultimately has a choice. So for me, like, it's important for me to kind of build myself up 
as a bit like in more like a, to learn the business of trucking, to build in a trucking, to teach them about finances, like the parts that maybe their parents might not teach them. But just like, I just feel like I don't have my kids, so they're kind of like my kids in it, to an extent. And I want to be that rich auntie for real. Like, I want to be that rich auntie. So if mom says no, just come to me. And so, yeah, I'm just, while I'm out here, I'm just planning. I'm constantly creating like uh, vision boards and checking off lists and making like, just building myself up um, to be that rich auntie, to be wealthy, not just flashy. I don't, I don't want the, I don't want the appearance of wealth, but I want actual wealth. And so right now I'm working on myself. I'm taking therapy or whatnot, because this year I decided that I wanted to invest more in myself as far as like mentally. Um, I wanted to make sure I was working on my emotional mind. Like, and, I mean, my emotional, my mind, my mental, my, you know, my physical, I wanted to pour into me in every aspect of that way. And so I've been, you know, going to therapy and everything just so when I come off of this truck, like I'm a completely different person. All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Naya, thank you very much. That's going to do it for the uh, Lockout Man podcast show. I really do appreciate you being on here. Don't forget to uh, don't forget that next time you want to come on here, you are a citizen so that you can go ahead and uh, conversate with me any and every time you want. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for inviting me. I appreciate the platform. All right, I appreciate you.